Jesus' prayer for his disciples from the book of John. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to our new podcast called The Journey Back. And the reason why we're calling it The Journey Back is because myself and Tri Robinson, who've had a friendship for over 30 years, have really been thinking a lot about our own faith and thinking a lot about how it's been really difficult through this season and through the last few years to really get back to what brought us to our faith and what brought that initial excitement to our faith. And so we've had a lot of conversations just as you know, good old friends. I mean, we've been friends for many, many years and we go way back. Um, and so we thought maybe we should bring those conversations to a podcast form. That'd be a lot of fun. And so we started brainstorming about it and we thought we got this crazy idea to do this podcast. So here we are. So you'll just be, um, you know, as we do this, you'll be just sitting, you know, next to us as we have a conversation about the things that are on our hearts and our minds and the things that we are thinking about and the things that we are processing. Uh, and, you know, Try is my old mentor. You know, uh, Try and I have known each other, like I said, for over 30 years. We, I helped plant the Boise Vineyard Church, which grew to be a, a, an amazing church and still grows today. And as a mentor, he's always the one I go to when I'm processing things, when I'm, you know, asking questions of myself and when I'm looking at the world around me and I have my own set of thoughts, but I always bounce things off of him. And he always does that to me as well. You know, so it's a friendship that goes both ways. And so we thought, let's bring those conversations online. Let's start having these conversations so other people can benefit from just the, the thoughts that are coming out of this and the encouragement that we feel. So try it. Welcome. And thank you for being willing to do this. This is kind of your idea. It was kind of our co-idea. Uh, so tell, you know, tell the people that are joining this for the first time what we're doing here. Yeah. Well, I think you've said it well, Ruben. I mean, it's um, we're basically taking our conversation out to others that want to participate in it. We know that, you know, that there's a lot of folks thinking a lot of the same things that we're thinking and trying to mm -hmm. sort it out. I mean, you know, we're living in a crazy time in human history, even globally with right. the pandemic going on and with the craziness of politics and, uh, you know, just the, the environmental crises that are around us right now. I mean, there's just so many things. And I think a lot of people are living in a, a bit of state of, fear and anxiety, which really messes us up, especially a lot of times with our walk with the Lord. Right. And so to, you know, to get that peace back, we got to kind of sure. journey back, you know, to the, the essence of why we signed up for this thing in the first place. Right. You know, you and I, like you said, I mean, we've, we've covered, a, you know, it's been a lot of water under the bridge <laughs> during this time. The, the world's changed a tremendous yeah. amount since I met you. You were, a young guy, I think you're like maybe 18, 19 years yeah. old, just come back from the mission field in Africa. I was on staff in the Lancaster Vineyard in Southern California and needing to find a youth pastor uh, to help me with this new youth program. We right. were doing. And I heard about you, <laughs> that you were this zealous young guy, you know, and, and so I went and called you up and went to lunch with you or something. I just remember that a long time ago. Yeah. How that that relationship started and, mm -hmm. and we started the God Rock Cafe in yep. Southern California. And I don't know. And then ended up coming to Idaho and planting a church together. And mm -hmm. uh, you were 21, I think, when we came. Yeah. 21, 22. Uh, to Idaho. Very young. Yeah. Yeah. And I was in my 40s at that mm -hmm. point with a 
family and everything. And so we're kind of different generations. Yeah. And I think that's important uh, in these conversations to get different perspectives uh, of things. So, you know, anyway, I, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this too. But one thing that I think drew me to you, because I had it all going for me, there was no reason that I needed to be leaving Southern California at all. Um, yeah, I you're driving every, a Mercedes Benz yeah, when you're 21. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I just come off the mission field and I bought a Mercedes Benz. I mean, who does that? But, you know, one thing that really struck me about you is that you were a man of high standards and integrity and you were authentic. And there, that's not, you know, back then and even today, that's a rare quality. And I think that authenticity is what just drew me, you know, to you as a person and as a young guy. I just that just was like it was like water to my soul. So what I really needed in my life, I needed somebody who was not only authentic in who they were as a person, but also authentic in their relationship with the Lord. And that to me meant everything. And, you know, you know, people talk a lot and there's a lot of, um, you know, you know, people put out there and especially we see it today on social media who they want you to believe they are. In those days, we didn't have social media. And I think that when I met you, there was a level of authenticity there and integrity that um, was unmatched. And you were a great storyteller. Uh, you had a way of really being able to hook people um, and really draw which, them in. <laughs> which got me in trouble a lot of times. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I know. And I was like, did it really go down that way? You know, I remember that story yeah. you told of uh, getting on the wrong plane in Vegas. That was... Um, you know, someday you'll have to tell that again. I don't even know if you remember that story, but that was a great. Yeah, I do. <laughs> How could I forget? Yeah, I know. Nobody ever forgot that story. Um, and recently, uh, you know, you wrote a blog post, or not a blog post, but you posted something on Facebook about your uh, your grandfather and how he was a storyteller. And just to you know bring our viewers and listeners up to speed, um, and as you saw the intro to this episode of the podcast, we are calling this, uh, you know, the journey back to truth. What is truth? And mm -hmm. so it's really gotten us thinking about that concept of truth. And especially in this political environment, when politicians are, you know, they have one version of the truth. And, you know, us as people, we're very much more in this day and age susceptible to, you know, falsehoods and what I say, alternative truths that are out there through social media, through news, you know, channels and all in politicians. And so we really thought it's an important subject to really talk about truth because it's something that I feel like people are really struggling with today. They don't know what is true. Uh, they don't know what's true from social mm -hmm. media. They don't know what's true from the media at large. Uh, politicians are saying X, Y, Z. So we felt like it was an important topic to talk about in this environment. Yeah. You know, we started this podcast with a, a piece of the high priestly prayer of Jesus, where he prayed for his disciples. And he prayed, you know, in the world, but not of the world. And then he said, sanctify them by truth, your truth, mm -hmm. the Lord's truth. And then they said, your word is true. And I think in the journey back, we're trying to get back to that prayer of Jesus when it comes to truth that it would come back to sanctified truth, that we would walk in sanctified truth. Now, sanctified truth is what we call in today's world, absolute truth. It's like what's really true, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's the undergirding. Uh, that kind of truth is really the undergirding of our faith. And when right. that goes, it makes faith kind of tough, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, because truth is truth. Now, the other kind of truth is relative truth. and. We, I remember having conversations all the way back in the 90s when we were first planning the, the Boise Vineyard Church. We talked about the difference between absolute truth and relative right. truth and how the world was operating in this, mm -hmm. your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth, therefore everybody has their own truth. And right. you might add, therefore there is no truth right. if that was the case. Mm -hmm. Because what's true is actually true. And right. that's absolute, it's absolutely mm -hmm. true. And uh, that's what we're trying to get back to is this biblical basis of our truth 
so that we can kind of go forward because the journey back is not just to go back. We don't want to go back into old methodologies of church growth and all that other stuff. I think that's all dead and gone. Mm -hmm. And in fact, a lot of what this podcast is about is discovering the new place God wants to take us. I've called it reform, Mm -hmm. R-E colon form, a new form, Mm the new form of the Christian kind of expression of faith, not new Christianity, but but a new church style, sure. as Jesus said, new wineskin. Right. You know? mm-hmm. And I think that I think that's coming right away. I think it's coming now. Mm-hmm. And I think what, it's hard for people to kind of die to the old form because that's what we're familiar with, comfortable with, and it, it becomes religiosity. Right. And God is taking us to this brand new, fresh thing right now. Mm-hmm. And, and we've got to go back to make it right. And, and one of those issues is truth. Yeah, that's really good because, you know, first of all, it's alarming at how quickly things can change and how fast this change was really thrust upon the world. The whole change in how we, you know, operate our day-to-day lives. And here we find churches struggling with how do they operate in a new way. And so if God is going to breathe his life into a new wineskin, it has to be done right. I think the believers who are going to be part of that you know, you and me who want to be part of that have to be, you know, anchored in the right, you know, tenets. And so truth is so important because we've really gotten away from that. Even interdenominational, yeah. they have so many different versions of what people believe is true. And what's disturbing to me is that people feel that it's okay for there to be other truths. And I think that we need to get back and they to accept what, it. Yes, I know. And we need to get back to what is the common, uh, you know, we need to have a common truth that we can all agree on. That is the truth. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, people are buying into relative truth Mm -hmm. and believing it's actually true. What they, you know, they're getting their truth off of the Internet. That's this unvetted information, these conspiracy theories. And I mean, when people operate in relative truth, the end product is always pain. Mm -hmm. It's always a mess. And to, to try to sort all that out and not get caught up in all yeah. that, but come back mm-hmm. to what's authentically true. I, and Because without that, you don't have, you can't walk in faith. And that's this big issue because mm-hmm. remember Hebrews defines faith mm-hmm. and it says faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the assurance of things or the assurance right. of things hoped for and the substance of things unseen. unseen. So faith requires substance and assurance. In other words, mm-hmm. it's not just based on hearsay. It's not faith isn't just a good feeling or right. something that we kind of is nebulous. Um, they, it's based on substance. Like, yeah. how do we know mm-hmm. that God is real? How do we know right. that that Christ is is the Son of God? And that you know, how do we know that stuff? Well, it's it's not just based on because we want to believe it. It's based on substance and assurance. It's yeah. it's grounded in something that's really true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think for believers, we've even gotten away, and I know that I've gotten away from even spending time in the Word or spending time with the Lord. You know, the first thing I do sometimes is pick up my phone and look, what's the news today? You know, what's happening in the world? You know, what does it say on Facebook? You know, and I think that's a real bad trap to get into because it just pulls you away from really what is the truth. What am I ingesting and, you know, what am I allowing to pull me in one direction or the other? And so, you know, one thing that I do every morning, in, which has been a really good habit, is to, you know, bookmark what I'm going to read in the morning. So I don't just, and I put that, you know, in my Bible, uh, you know, on my nightstand. So I don't just go right to my cell phone and start ingesting, you know, the world's version of the truth. And I think that, um, you know, even today when I look on at social media, I see so much turmoil within, you know, believers and unbelievers. There used to be somewhat of, you know, you know, Christians used to kind of walk in lockstep, you know, used to kind of, they used to be conservatives, Republican, and I don't want to talk about politics here. And there was this unity among, and anymore, you know, you see a lot of infighting and a lot of, you know, real strong feelings and polarization, which I don't think is entirely bad because I think that people got to pull themselves out of the stories that have been told through the media and the stories that are being told on social media and start to ask themselves questions. What do I believe? What do I really think? And so this time has been good. I've paid attention to a lot of the debates out there on social media. And I think it's interesting that people 
really get into it. But I think that Christians really need to start asking themselves and start to think critically about the stuff that they're being fed online and from friends. Mm -hmm. Well, they need to be grounded, you know, and, mm -hmm. and actually it's the relative truth that is caused, not just the disunity in the country, but the disunity in the church. Yeah. Because, um, you know, we, all of a sudden people are making choices concerning what they really believe. Mm -hmm. and, and based on what they really believe, um, where their faith really is, is really a reflection of their true ideology. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden we're seeing that, you know, that's, you can't hide that in this time. Sure. Yeah. Right. And that's a, that's, that's not a bad thing. And the fact that, you know, in the early church, and it's a subject for another time in the book mm -hmm. of Acts, one of the things that was characteristic was that the people had said over and over again, and the people were of one heart and one mind. I mean, they yeah. were, you know, and they shared everything together. They sacrificed for one another. And as right. a result of having this, this really true unity, but their unity came from absolute truth mm. uh, and, and not this relative truth that we're operating in today. And so that's, that's, that's the hope. Yeah. So how do you see, you know, believers, and I say believers and not talk about the church in general, because the church is, you know, I'd be, it's so fragmented right now. So how do, you know, believers get back to that, to where they, you know, are operating in a way that brings that unity? I mean, how does that happen in a church that's so fragmented today? Well, you know, I mean, it says sanctify them in, in your truth, your word is true. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it really is about coming back to biblical truth. Mm -hmm. And when you start thinking about things like the fruits of the Holy Spirit, peace, patience, kindness, mm -hmm. goodness, love, self-control. I mean, these are things to weigh against what's going on out there in the world and mm -hmm. say, are these people operating sure. in the fruits of the Spirit or the definition of love, which mm -hmm. Paul defines in 1 Corinthians 13 and says, you know, this is what love is and this is what it's not. Because we know that God is love, so we gotta we go back to that definition because it defines Christ likeness, and yeah. and I think that that's the important thing is to get back to a Christ like attitude and spirit and operation. Like, our, our, you know, where's our heart when it mm -hmm. comes to issues of the poor or immigrants mm -hmm. or whatever it is? You know that Jesus was yeah. so clear about. You mm -hmm. know, and how does how does our you know our actions line up, our present actions and thoughts and ideology line up with the things that Jesus actually commissioned us to do, you know? And yeah. So uh, that'll bring us back to truth. And, and the other thing is that when it comes to the assurance mm -hmm. and the substance, the evidence that Hebrews talks about, one of the things I see in the midst of relative truth, people like to, th they, they do the same thing with, scientific fact, for example, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they take the science they like and throw out the science they don't like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, if it doesn't suit them. Right, know? right. And, uh, you know, I, and so the world looks at the church right now and thinks that, well, at least especially the evangelical church, it says, you know, these guys are opposed to, to science, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think of Martin Luther, yeah, like, they, their people were saying back in the days of the, before the Reformation, you know, that the world was flat. Yeah. And, you know, and the church liked that right. because it kind of could help control the situation mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. their belief. And uh, and Martin Luther came along after finding the truth in God's word, said, you know, we've got to, we've got to settle on what's actually proven truth. Right, right. He didn't reject science. He mm -hmm. embraced it. I came to Christ through science. I was a biology teacher mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. those early days that I came to the Lord and saw God in the world, in the earth and in the, the environment. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's why I'm such an avid, you know, preacher of creation care today. Right, right. Is because that, that's what brought me to the Lord, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, man is without excuse from knowing God because he's revealed himself through all that he's created, mm -hmm. Paul said in Romans 1, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and when we push all the environment issues aside, which a lot of evangelicalism right. has, and I'm one, you know, mm -hmm. we push away our opportunity for evangelism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because people are finding God in his creation. Yeah. So anyway, 
So we, you, we can talk about all of this in future podcasts. But. Yes, and we will, because, you know, yeah, that's a, a big, you know, <laughs> issue. Science in the church is, a, it always has been, as you've been, you know, as you mentioned here, like way back to the Reformation, science in the church and how the church views science and how the world views the church's view of, you know, science. That's an interesting, you know, point and a uh, point for discussion. Because there's a lot of angles to that. There's a lot of facets to science. And if we're going to talk about truth, then, you know, there's a lot of, you know, questions on both sides that really, I think, we should talk about. And so we will save those for future episodes. So through this podcast, try what is your hope through over time and over the next few episodes? And what is your vision that we get across to our listeners and viewers? Well, the, the world is really in trouble. Mm -hmm. I think that anyone who's being honest right now can say that. I mean, it's the world is the sickest it's ever been in our mm -hmm. lifetime or, you know, many years. And, um, the world is broke, or especially our country is broke right now. I mean, there's we're in this horrible debt, mm -hmm. national debt. Uh, that's uh, there's so much things that look right. so hopeless right now. Right. And uh, the politics is such a, so, such a mess right now. Nobody mm -hmm. can get together, and it's 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 just this breeding mm -hmm. this anger and hatred, and which is all opposite right. of Christ likeness. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can't participate in that, you yep. know. And and we want to. If I my prayer for this podcast is that we will come back to that hope mm -hmm. that first launched our faith, that is based on substance and assurance. Yeah, and um, and. And see what's really important because we actually want to be part of the solution mm -hmm. to what's going on in the world and not you know what's causing it right so, you know uh, as i thought about this podcast i thought you know i just don't want to be another voice out there that's trying to push another agenda or push another uh, conspiracy theory or point of view um, i really want to be somebody who is you know pushing not pushing, but presenting truth. I really want to be part of, like you said, the solution and bringing people back to understanding how to view the world right now. And, you know, I have a lot of phone conversations and, you know, I have a lot of family and we, you know, I get a lot of phone calls. People are like, what do you think about what's going on? And people are really caught up in the moment right now and really caught up with, with the events. And they're really driven a lot by fear. I uh, get a lot of conversations from family members who are like, I'm, I'm nervous about where this world is. I'm nervous about the government, uh, what that means for us and all different angles. And, you know, Carrie and I have talked a lot about this. We're like, what we need to be doing is telling people and bringing people back to the truth. That, number one, God is in control. And number two, don't be operating out of fear. And number three, mm -hmm. we have the word. You know, he's given us, you know, his word that we can rely on and we can fall back on and not to be going to all of these other, um, you know, sources for our, you know, direction. So any last things you want to say before we bring it to a close here? Well, I'm just saying that none of this has cut God off guard. Mm -hmm. You know, if you read Matthew 24 and Matthew 25, and, you know, again, in some of the other gospels, he, he talks about a time just like this. Yeah. He tells us to be alert, to be aware, to be on guard. I mean, he uses those words, mm -hmm. you know, but but calls us to authentic Christianity in the midst of it all, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's a very powerful thing. And when, when we do that, um, I think, and if we do that, we're going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, thank you all for joining us, and we hope that you'll join us in the future. And as we exit this portion of the show, we would just encourage you to meditate on that passage, and we're going to read it again, and be asking yourself, how can you push away other you know, voices in your life that have possibly led you down directions that lead you to fear and, you know, or anxiety? And ask yourself, how can you be more focused on the truth of the word and the truth of the spirit in your life, as opposed to just going to other sources for their truths? So we encourage you to sit back and listen to this passage one more time as we close. Again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you here next time. Jesus' prayer for his disciples from the book of John. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. 
I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Funding for the journey back is made possible by viewers like you. Please visit patreon.com forward slash the journey back to learn more about supporting this podcast.